Do, 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 do. Hey, everybody, what is up? Welcome to the weekly VS Code live stream. It is Thursday, November the... How do you find the date on an Apple Watch? It should be the 18th, November the 18th. We're glad you're with us. What's up, chat? How are you? How are you on this fine Thursday? It's cold here. I want to know if it's cold where you are. It was warm a couple days ago, but things have have taken a turn for the worse. We are in full on winter, but I do realize that the earth is round. And so we're in all sorts of seasons. I don't know. Is it cold where you are or hot? Are you on summer vacation? I want to know so I can vicariously be on summer vacation. Um, what are we doing today? Well, first of all, before we get started, you know, the drill, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button because, um, I mean, just try it, see what happens. Hit the subscribe button. I think you'll like it. Uh, check us out over on TikTok, tiktok.com slash at VS Code. And our meetup group, which we might need a URL for. Producer, do we have a URL for our meetup group? We need a short, a shortener, like a URL shortener for this meetup URL. It's too long. Look at this. All right. What are we doing today, folks? Today, today we are doing Docker all day. All day. And by the way, I realized this the other day, we've been streaming, uh, I think this is our 36th week, something like that, we, that we've streamed straight. It's crazy. Uh, and I know that all of you have been here for all 36 weeks, and I appreciate that. You're all wonderful and, and awesome. So thank you for being with us. We are doing Docker today, but I'm not doing Docker because uh, I'm just not that smart. But I've got a couple of folks with me who are, please welcome uh, to the stage. We don't have a stage, to the stream. It's a stream. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Uche, program manager at Microsoft, who works on the Docker extension for VS Code and the Docker tools for Visual Studio. And Brandon, who also works on the Docker extension at uh, Microsoft, software engineer, uh, Docker extension for Visual Studio Code. So let's welcome both of those folks to the stream. There's Brandon. Sorry, I was supposed to add him and I didn't. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> What's up? Hello. Welcome to the VS Code live stream. Thank you for being here. How are y'all? Doing pretty good. How about you? Doing well. How about you, Uche? Just living life, doing what I can. <laughs> I, I hear you. I like that every time we're on a stream now, we have people on. It's like a peer down somebody's hallway or into somebody's living room. In my case, my home office. See, that's what you get here, chat. You get uh, a peek into our personal lives because uh, this is who we are. So thanks for being here. What are we doing today with Docker? Oh, we have so much in store. I'm super excited to show off what, um, like, um, so Brandon, he's a very modest guy, but he's done such an amazing job in building the, um, building up the VS Code um, Docker extension. Um, and so there's just so much feature. It's very feature rich. It really allows you to take um, advantage of so much in Docker desktop and um, all, of the, all the things you can do with the Docker resources, containers, registries, volumes, anything you can think of. Um, and so I'm just excited to show off what we are, um, like what, we're, what we have in the Docker extension for VS Code. Um, that, that is awesome. You know, I love the Docker extension for VS Code because I can actually use Docker. Without it, I'm just helpless. And so, chat, what I want to know is, do you are you using the extension for VS Code? Just put like yes or no in the chat. Let's do a quick poll. Just want to know if you guys are using the extension cuz cuz we love it. All right, so um so what are we doing today? What do you got for us? Okay, let me take you through a couple things. Um so go ahead and um show gotcha. show yeah. my screen. Awesome. Hey, could you bump your font size up just a smidge? So this would be, um, so I think that's a brand new screen. You can go ahead and. Oh, it is. Oh, sorry. That? You want me to, you want me to put up Uche's screen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go one? ahead. Ah, sorry. Here we go. How many, how many, there we go. There we go. <laughs> this is me. I'm doing I'm a decent um, host, terrible presenter. All right. Awesome. So, um, let's, let's get started. Basically, um, I want to introduce you to the extension, the doc, the Docker extension of VS Code. Um, and so I'm going to take you through like a very simple start to finish. Um, first thing I want us to talk about and work on is um, one of our 
most popular languages, which is the Node.js, is, is, no, is a, say, JavaScript. Node.js Express app is what I'm in right now. Um, all of these, um, the two samples I'm going to work on today can actually be found on um, via on aka.ms slash VSC dash Docker dash samples. And so we're going to be posting that in the chat, hopefully once or twice, to make sure that y'all can actually, um, you know, take advantage and get clone it into your own local machine and take advantage. So as soon as I actually get clone, what I'm doing is um, you're going to actually be in, I, I chose to name my Git project sample demo one, two, three, but say I CD and I was in sample demo. Well, you actually need to go ahead and, and I hope you y'all can see this, try to make it as big as I could. You need to actually CD into um, Express app. And then you, you would do code space dot dash R. And so what this will do is this will restart visuals code. In this case, it's like, hey, I'm already I'm already here. So don't worry about it. But um, but once you do that, it'll restart Visual Studio code in this workspace, Express app. So now we can get started. Hey, Uche. Before you get started, um, can you, in 60 seconds, give an introduction to what Docker is? Or am I getting ahead of ahead of the program here? Not at all. Um, so I know Brandon could describe this back to front very easily, but I'll explain it for someone that isn't as good technically as a developer. Um, the way I put Docker is, um, Docker is, well, I use it in the way of how you use it. So containers is are a um, way to run your machine code, your sorry, your code, so that you can actually have all the dependencies and whatever you need in that air in in that small package. It's a it's a basically a runtime. Um, for, and I'll explain that once you see a Docker file, it'll all make sense because a Docker file is simply the instructions by which you build a container. And those instructions, you'll very clearly see, they put your app code in and they, they also list out some of the extra dependencies you need, like, hey, download, for this case, download um, an image. An image is basically a frozen system instruction. And then download the image that can run an Express app. And then just add in my actual app code and any other specific dependencies I need. Expose a port so that that way it can connect to the internet. And away we go. So people call it a pre-production -pre environment because it allows you to get kind of close to a production environment where you put all the similar dependencies in the container. And then you can actually... Um, you know, if you deploy it to say Azure or another cloud provider, you should be able to have similar dependencies and experience less trouble going from all of the things that are downloaded, all the packages you have downloaded on your local machine. Instead, you have them downloaded into a simple container that has nothing but exactly what it needs to run your app. And then when it's in production, it should also have nothing but what it needs to run your app and you shouldn't end up with, oh crap, I didn't realize that only my laptop had this thing installed, but my actual production environment didn't. And now everything fails. So yeah. that's, how, that's how I understand it. I like that. And I like the sort of the idea of this is kind of addressing the works on my machine problem that developers have been struggling with forever. And I think, Uche, you said it well when you said, when you see it, you'll understand it. I didn't actually understand it until I saw it work. And then I was like, oh, that's crazy. I can't believe that's possible, but okay, it seems like magic. So go ahead. I let's let's see it in action. Awesome. So we're starting off with a um, with a Express app. So this Express app actually works with F5. So if I hit F5, what I've done in, um, as soon as I got into this is I actually already did an npm install. So I won't do this again. What that did was this install all of the dependencies in this uh, directory. Um, and so now I'm going to hit F5 because I have all of the correct things installed coming from the um, packages.json. So we hit F5, and I should see in a little bit, it should pop up and just be a Express app running locally. This isn't, this wouldn't be a container. Okay, so it popped up, and I'm going to drag it over here. And bada bing, bada boom. Oh, can't find the page. That's still connecting, yeah. 
Okay. If I know anything about demos, it purposely sabotages you. Yes. Well, it slows down 10 X because it knows that people are watching. <laughs> this is like, yeah. Oh, you need this right now. How about a 30 second buffering on loading a tab from your local host? Yeah. It's, it's painful. There's oh. a problem. It's on a breakpoint. Oh, oh that'll, wait that'll a minute. Do it too. It's because we hit a breakpoint. Wait, what does it say? Ah, oh, we hit a breakpoint because it's a little, isn't it a little too early to be coding? <sighs> that's, <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty mean of VS code to just absolutely, um, judge me for the way that I want to demo, but let's hit continue. And this shows you that, of course, we have debugging support, like VS Code has native debugging support. So now that we actually kept it going, we see, oh, welcome to Express, very, very simple Express app. But now let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes of what we care about, and let's run this in a container. So we're going to hit stop. We're going to do, and we're going to do what people can simply do is hit control shift P or in some cases you can hit F1, um, but control shift P brings up our window and we're going to do my favorite command, which is scaffolding. We add Docker files to workspace. So this command is going to take us through a little wizard and we're going to go with Node.js as our application platform. It says choose your package JSON. So we want to choose the package JSON in the root. Some folks may have slightly different use cases. And then what port? I usually just go with the default. Um, I find it easiest. For this case, we're not actually going to add Docker Compose files. So you say no. Um, so we can go ahead and overwrite anything. And what we're going to see is, boom, a Docker file. So what I'm excited to show off is this Docker file, as you can see, it starts from a node image. And it has um, just simple commands that basically create what you need to actually run your Express app in a container. Um, a couple features I want to show off real quick on the Docker file is we have hover support. Um, and this links to online documentation. And so I really enjoy the fact that if I'm confused, I get to see examples of what how to do it. And you can go online if something gets uh, a little bit too confusing. We also have tab um, completion. So we have some, so you could say, type in expose, like if I want to type in expose, I could go down and hit tab. Um, and then I could type in something like 6,000. Um, and if I want, um, is there, uh, and if I want, I could maybe type in something like health check. Oh, we're still here. Hit tab one more time. You're still in the previous oh. completion. There you go. Okay, I just needed to hit tab. And so I could do something like health check. And you can see this, we have the ability to now change this to like 50 S and then we tab, tab, tab. And then once we get through, it'll be done. So I'm going to erase that for now and let's go ahead and actually, um, build our Docker file. Um, so what, I, what happened when I, um, do you have any questions so far? Uh, you're muted, Burke. You're muted, Burke. What would an online meeting be without that line? <laughs> Still muted. There you are. Unbelievable. Now you're back. <laughs> I was hardware muted and then software muted. All right. So can I use Docker integration with something like Ansible deployment to be able to check my playbooks? I don't know what an Ansible is or a playbook is. Y'all know the answer to this question? I, honestly, I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, that's something that we can definitely look into. But thanks for the question. Um, yeah, that, that, sorry we couldn't answer that. No, we just don't have any uh, Ansible answers here. Uh, let's see. Um, so Lucas is asking, hey, can we take a short look at how to debug running a Python container? Absolutely. So we're going to get to that in um, a second. We're on the awesome. way. All right. So right here, I'm going to hit F5. Um, and in this case, I just hit the play button like a pedestrian. But we're going to hit F5. <laughs> And um, what this does is it actually builds your Docker container. And um, by the end of it, it's going to actually um, run your Docker container. So as you can see, there's a bunch of like build output happening down here. Um, hopefully my computer still loves me and won't um, crash. <laughs> but it wouldn't, be the, it wouldn't be because of the containers. It would be because my computer is very slow at times. So um, 
now we're really close. It's uh, showing the Shaw value and um, it's launching this again. Oh, wow. Turns out that um, VS Code is still judging me for my decisions, but we're going to hit continue regardless. And so in this case, that just wanted to, that was just a show off being very silly. That was just to show off that we do have debugging support in containers. We have debugging uh, support for Node, Python, and .NET. Um, so we've so so far we've shown off. Um, and so if I hit X, the container is still running right here. Um, so we're just showing off that we still have debugging support for those three languages, first class in um, within a Docker container, which is awesome. It was really really exciting to have that. Um, we're going to yeah, go that's, over. Go that's ahead. such a cool thing, Uche. And one of the things that I really enjoy about the Docker extension is that you're able to do that because um, that's one of the first things you're going to want to do after you get something in a container is debug it, look at the shell, things like that. Stuff that you can do from the command line because I guess the extension is just piping everything to commands underneath. I mean, I assume you can do all this from the CLI. I just have no idea how. Absolutely. You can do pretty much all the things you can do here from the CLI, but we make it in, in some ways a lot easier. And there'll be things that I'll show that will get kind of tedious if you want to do it all in the C, C, um, CLI. And so this tool really helps you, um, you know, it, it really just really helps you kind of click and right click through things. Um, so the yeah. other thing I think worth mentioning is that in cases like Docker build, Docker run, we show what CLI command we're running so that users can see what's actually happening behind the scenes. So I think if you scroll down a little or up a little bit, there's the build command and then down after the build will be the run command that we use. So we've got another, um, what is Docker bro? Please answer. Although we've already answered what Docker is. Should we try Should we do it again? Here, let, let me try an explanation. Y'all tell me what you think of this. I've explained it to people like this. You know, when you create a program on windows and you compile it and it has an exe, and it has everything in it that you need it to run. You just stick that exe out on another machine. You double click it and it works. All the dependencies are there. Everything works in a perfect world. That's like Docker, but for your website. You put your website in this container and the container has Node and it's got a file system and you just take that container and you throw it up on a server and it just works. How's that explanation? Is it good? Is it bad? Docker experts, what do you think? And this is a case where you're putting all the dependencies in. Yes, exactly. And that's exactly what this file is doing. Hopefully that helps. Um, let's see here. Um, we've got another question. Where was it? Oh yeah, people want to know if you can do, can you do an example of Spring Boot? I think you're just gonna have to show every language, every framework, all running in Docker containers for this demo. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the, what I want to do um, mainly is first that we do have uh, language support for um, in terms of debugging, we have language support for um, like uh, Node, Python, th these different Pythons and uh, .NET. So you have .NET, Python, and for the other ones, we have the ability to scaffold your file, but you we don't have support for them in terms of debugging. Uh, not yet. So what I want to make sure that I show off is there's a lot that you can do regardless of language, language agnostic. And I want to make sure I cover plenty of those features because there's plenty to do with, you know, taking a, say, Java app, scaffolding it, getting it to run. But there's language agnostic things that will cut across any of our users that I want to make sure I show off. Um, and so to start off with that, that can be when you click on the whale icon, you're going to see in, in this individual express app running. And if you actually click this drop down, boom, you can see files. So you can easily see the files of the container. And as that loads, it'll actually make it so simple to navigate your container files. And um, like that's just something that I wanted to make sure I show off. This is like an awesome feature, really saves you time. And you can tell it's like in the container, loading it, doing whatever it has to do to get the, the files. You can imagine, you can see that we can actually open the file and download it onto our local machine. So that's awesome. Um, we can also look at the logs of a specific container or attach the shell. So you can imagine that that's important if you're like, if you need to run commands in the container or you can say click view logs and you see that it's doing Docker logs, tail, et cetera, with the SHA, that 
I wouldn't want to have to do. Yeah, and there's all the logs that came through. Yeah, color coded and everything. Um, so we have another project actually to show y'all. Um, and I want to make sure that we we can show you our other half of Do Docker, which is Docker Compose. But um, before we jump over to our um, Flask app, which is going to be a Python-based app, do we have um, any big questions we should answer? Go ahead you know, and we've hit got... the disconnect icon there, Uche, because one thing that we do for you is we shut down that container. Now, there is an option if you don't want it to do that. But when you disconnect, we'll stop that container because it's not needed anymore. Boom. No so let's do sound. that. That's a really cool feature. Let's do one question and then we'll move on because we've got uh, about 10 minutes left here. Um, but is it possible to remote connect to a running container that is on a remote server Docker host without the Docker CLI on your local machine? It Just is. Try that. Um, it's going to take some settings, uh, but it is possible because we use Docker Road for connecting for most of the Explorer features. Now, obviously, if you run something, some command in the terminal that's a Docker command, it's not going to work because Docker isn't present. Um, but you can also do remote VS Code connection to that machine over SSH or containers or uh, WSL if it's a WSL instance. Mm -hmm. So with, Brandon, would the answer be to connect to the machine with remote SSH and then open it? Is that how you would do it? That's probably the easiest option, but we do support um, remoting with VS Code running on your local machine. Um, so this Explorer view that Uche is showing right now, where it's showing the containers, images, all of that works from Docker Road, and so it will uh, it will work. So is there like a link or something we can give people to check that out, or maybe? Yeah, I can look something up. All right. Absolutely. So while we were chatting, um, I went ahead and started, um, you, you can see I switched into the Flask app using the same code dot dash R. Um, and again, that's what you would want to do to really start the Flask app workspace. So here um, we already have the Docker file to run your Flask app locally, and I won't waste our time with that, but let's add um, Docker Compose. Let's see what happens when we compose a Python Flask app. So again, for this one, to create this Docker file, I did Control Shift P, add Docker files to workspace, chose Flask, um, chose my entry point. It's a, wiz a whole wizard that it leads you through. Um, so for now, let's actually go ahead and add, do our other command, Control Shift P, add Docker files to workspace. Compose files. Sorry, compose files to workspace. I just did that. Docker files to workspace. And so when this wizard pops up. Right um, now it's loading the Python extension. extension. Yes, it is. Um, so real quick while it's loading the Python extension, just to like in a quick 30 seconds or less, what is compose? This has always been a point of confusion for me as well. Yeah, I can take that one. So ahead, compose Brandon. is basically when you have multiple containers that you need to run, compose is one of the easiest ways to do it. So let's say you have a Flask app and a database that's running behind it, I chose those for a reason, then Compose will let you start both of those at the same time really easily. Um, and it also facilitates networking between those containers so you can access one from the other very easily um, and a lot of other features. Okay, nice. I like that example of the two containers. Uh, just real quick, is it safe to show logs? Oh, whoop, no, that's not one. Although, thank you for the comment uh, in Emerge. That's great. Is it safe to show logs on live streaming? It is when you're showing demo apps. Um, if you were building uh, a banking system, maybe you wouldn't want to do that. But mm -hmm. that's not what we're doing here. So, But good call out. It's always good to be out. cognizant of what you're putting on the screen. All right. Oops, sorry. Let's hide this. So let's go ahead and um, add the Docker Compose files with Flask. And you can see it kind of tells you, hey, you need an app.py or manage py. And let's use the 5000 um, default for Flask. So now what's going to do is it, we you notice it created two files for us, the Compose debugging file, which gives you actual debugging in your Flask app, or the Compose YAML file. So I'm super excited. In the 1.18 release, we actually came through, and um, not we, I want to make, make sure I give some props to Brandon for his really hard work in creating the 
a, com a new Docker Compose language service. So if I hit um, control space bar for um, IntelliSense, you can see that we actually now have all, all kinds of awesome completions that you can have. And you see like the health check again, has some really cool um, like things you can tap through. Um, you can also do awesome things like hovering um, for completions, like, uh, sorry, hovering for information and you get tool tips. Um, and for the purposes of this um, compose, and for the purposes of this file, let's actually add a database and a volume that will keep our, that, that will persist um, some of the information that'll be in our app. So let's um, see what we can do here. We can press control space. Again, we have, oh, image, image name. Let's make an image from Redis. Um, we can say volumes. Hit tab, tab one more time. You're still tab. in the completion. That's something I've never liked about completions is that enter doesn't get you out of it. I yeah. think you can. I think you can tweak that in the VS Code settings, can't you? Oh. I'll have to look. I think. Yeah, you can I like that. One. So we can also now do um, volume name and container path, or we can choose host path. So let's do volume name. Let's go with Redis vol, um, and then let's let's go to the path of data slash data slash data. Yeah, and the reason Uche is picking these in particular. Uh, slash data. That's just where Redis, the Redis container, expects to have uh, data um, for reading and writing and persistence. Um, you'll want to change it to RW as well because Redis needs to be able to write. Smart. So let's change it to read and write, and then let's also call it Redis vol. Since we we're gonna, we're basically saying we already made a volume um, on the left volume name, we actually need to make that volume in our compose debug file. So you see this GUI, this uh, nice massive command that I do not feel like writing. I'm glad that we gave you this. <laughs> and so now what we can do is, um, after we've now shown off these awesome language, compose language features, um, we can actually right click on our compose debug file and choose something called compose up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and compose up. And what this is going to do is it's going to, again, execute compose build, which is building multiple services. It's going through and building our Flask app image. It's using th that Docker file here to build the Flask image. And then for the database, Redis, it's just making this image from, guess what? I can actually now c control click on the link. And you can actually see the Docker hub where this Redis image is coming from. So it's really awesome, really juicy feature. It makes it so much simpler to understand what's going on um, when you're trying to t use an image. Um, I'll show off really quick. You can actually also, if you have multiple services, say you have 10, 15 services, you can go ahead and actually click compose up select services. And what this does is this is a window that pops up, um, that should pop up once it reads. Maybe I'm doing too much at one you have time. To, you, have to, you have to pay the demo yeah, tax. Got a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, what are you doing? There it is. <laughs> Boom. So here you can now choose services to start, and you and it'll save your settings. So I could choose both. I could choose one. You can hit this check button to get all or none. And you can imagine we have a laundry list, 10, 15 services. It's really nice to be able to say, I want to sh choose only my front end or back end services. So remember that compose up select services is a way to start a subset of services. And it's a feature we're really excited about. So now you see that, okay, everything's running. Um, so we have the debugger running. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over to the debug tab, make sure the Python remote attach config is on, uh, and then we can attach to that app. So right now it's running in the container, but the command we use to start it tells it to wait until something attaches before it will actually do anything. I see. So now we can hit F5 on Python remote attach, which is something you would um, add in your... Started running. Do you want to start another instance? No? Yes. Did you hit F5 twice? I think so, accidentally. All right, so yeah, so here we've got a breakpoint on the app. So you can go over to the whale icon and right click that uh, running Flask app and do open in browser. 
and it'll take you straight to that app. And we can see as well how huh, there it there's is. the breakpoint being hit, and we'll be able to see an incremented hit count. Um, oh, but we'll we actually show how the... Redis is working. Yes, but we actually 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 hit another breakpoint. Says the VS Code live stream likes to host more than Uche. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> that's that true. That's pretty harsh. That's, true. that's pretty Chat, harsh. That is... <laughs> That's, that's VS Code say, chat, that's not true. I promise you, chat Chat does not like me more than they like you. They don't like me. But here, look, um, look at this. Maybe this finally convinces me to use Docker sometime from Mazar. Look, I'm with you. I didn't use Docker before the extension because I just couldn't do it. But it's such a magical thing to be able to spin up a database inside of a container instead of installing it on your computer. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a magical thing to be able to do and extremely powerful once you get into the swing of using Docker. Absolutely. Yeah, your breakpoint again. So that's why it's spinning. Oh, there we go. So let's remove this breakpoint. And let's go ahead and grab this. Don't again. forget to hit F5 because it's still paused. Thank you. And so now we have, now that um, the VS Code live stream is done judging me for the hard work we put in, <laughs> you can see that this page has been accessed this many times. And because we actually used a volume, you can the data persists. So the volume is uh, basically a mapping between your um, like a secret area in your local PC and the actual container. And so every time I'm refreshing, there's a place in my actual local PC that's getting incremented and updated, and that persists until I actually go in and say either delete the volume in in the Explorer that I'll show or you can uh, go ahead and stop accessing the volume in your actual compose file. So let me X this off and let's show off some really cool things um, in our whale icon, our Docker Explorer. So just real quick, we're, we're a little bit over time. We got two minutes over. We can keep going, uh, but we, we try to keep it to 30 minutes, but uh, yeah, let's keep, let's keep doing this here. Okay. Yeah. I only have about three or four, like four or five things. I, I'll just uh, briefly look over. Okay. Um, no problem. And I luckily have it in a list, so it won't be too hard. So here we have right-click commands where we can stop and start a container. You can even inspect it to go in and see all the data around it. You'll notice that this cool, we have this cool blade here. It's called a compose group. The compose group allows you to even look at the compose log. So that's a tandem blending of all the logs of this group, including Flask app and Redis. You can start, stop them as a group, restart them all as a group, or run compose down as a group. Um, so I'm, I really love that. I already showed you how you can actually attach to a shell um, in in a VS Code, in, sorry, in a container. Um, and so one thing I really am excited about is you notice that we have volume, so we have tool tips. If you hover over a container, it shows you basically a simple inspect of it. You'll notice that we have networks, ports, the image. And if we go to the volumes, it actually has associated containers with it. So this is a container that's associated with this volume that we remember from our compose debug file. Um, and yeah, so lastly, we have um, the ability, these, there's, when we create these containers, they were created from images. And so the, the Flask app is one of the images. I could actually, if I wanted to, push this to an Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub, which are two I have here. And the last thing I can show is that once I push this image to this, the image is not the running container, the container is actually a running instance of an image. I could say go to Uche Docker Test, and I could go ahead and push this like Flask image. Sorry, if I actually open up and get to the actual image tag. I could actually deploy this to an ACI instance or um, to an Azure Apps service directly, which is awesome. So you see my um, my subscription. You would type in yada yada, uh, sorry, <laughs> yada yada. Too many semicolons. Too many semicolons, and you could actually deploy to various other things the, to create a new web app. So those are all of the, those are all the main features I wanted to go over. And thank you so much for your time. But yeah, that's. That's basically some of the really great, um, most important use cases. We have debugging, even in Compose, um, for single services. We have um, Node, Python, and 
Node, sorry, yeah, Node, Python, and .NET debugging, and various other things I've shown you, such as the hovering. But yeah, just get in there. We really recommend get in there and play around. If you go to, I think, aka.ms slash, um, I think it's VS Code Docker. I want to make sure. Dash um, Docker or just VS Code Docker altogether? aka.ms slash VS Code Docker. There it is, VS Code Live slash Docker, Docker extension. Yeah, even um, if you type in VS Code Docker, all one word, um, aka.ms slash VS Code Docker, all one word, that should get you right to the Visual Studio Marketplace for um, the Docker extension. And you can try today and get, get, and, um, get ready. Get, have fun and get ready to use uh, all the goodness of the extension. That is awesome. So I think this is a good way to end it here from Willow who says, Docker makes sense now. I don't think you could have asked for uh, better feedback than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> if, if Docker makes sense now after watching this stream, we're so glad you've been with us. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you, uh, Uche and Brandon and your whole team for the hard work that y'all do on this extension that allows people like me to actually use and be productive with Docker. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely. We can stop sharing the screen now. I have nothing else to show. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate your appreciate you having us on. Um, yeah. Then I, it meant a lot to our team that y'all reached out and wanted to see what we um, had to offer. Awesome. Well, thank you for being with us, chat. Uh, that's all for this week. Next week is the Thanksgiving holidays. I think we're taking y'all taking some time off for Thanksgiving. Are y'all doing? You, you doing turkey? Yeah, I'm going to be taking next week off. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll take next week's off. So we'll we'll see you here back here the week after that, which I believe is a release party. First week of the Ooh. month, maybe. Could be. All you right, we'll it. see you there. Thanks for being don't, with us. Bye, don't everybody. Forget the, don't forget the mac and cheese, everyone. <laughs> yeah, essential mac and cheese. Bye, folks. <laughs>